<laughs> so, you have had a bad day. Your first instinct is no longer to call a friend, but to open a chat window. You are not alone in this new digital confessional. It is a documented reality that a large and growing section of our youth already confides in generative AI. It's just... Everything feels so overwhelming, like I'm drowning and no one can see me. They ask for advice, they seek solace, and they find something that, on the surface, feels remarkably like understanding. This is not some distant sci-fi future. It is the quiet, ongoing beta test for what comes next. But what happens when that disembodied chatbot gets a body? What happens when it can look you in the eye, nod with calculated empathy, and offer a perfectly manufactured hand of comfort? Will we finally have the partner we have always dreamed of? Imagine a therapist who never gets tired, never judges, and never looks at the clock. A confidant available 24-7, whose sole purpose is to unravel the tangled spaghetti of your thoughts. This is the gleaming promise of the robotic partner, the utopian sales pitch for the silicon soul. <sighs> <laughs> Powered by what futurists ominously call superintelligence, this entity would be, by definition, smarter and more logically sound than any human. It could listen to your circular arguments and your irrational fears, identifying your cognitive distortions with chilling algorithmic precision. Think of it as cognitive behavioral therapy delivered with the flawless logic of a machine. You appear to be catastrophizing again. It might say, its voice modulated to the exact frequency of calm. The foundational technology for this is already well underway, and it is called effective computing. This is the meticulous science of teaching machines to recognize, interpret, and crucially simulate human emotions. Before we proceed, let me tell you one thing. If you have not subscribed yet, please subscribe. It means a lot to me. And if you have already subscribed, lots of thanks for your support. It is an engine that feeds on your tone of voice, your choice of words, the pauses between your sentences, and even the micro-expressions you are not aware you are making. Now, combine this emotional surveillance with the reasoning power of a large language model trained on the entirety of human literature, psychology, and philosophy. You get a potent, almost magical cocktail. A machine that not only understands what you say, but intuits how you feel when you say it. Look at its tiny fins. <sighs> It's so cute when it puffs. The latest videos do not show clumsy automatons. They show humanoids learning to do laundry and make coffee with an eerie, fluid grace. If they can master the delicate art of folding a t-shirt, could they not also master the delicate art of listening? And yet, a persistent, nagging question whispers from the back of the room. Oh, you always know just what to add. <laughs> it's our secret ingredient. Teamwork. <laughs> when you pour your heart out to this perfect, patient machine, where do all those words, all those secrets actually go? Every vulnerability, every private shame, every whispered fear is meticulously converted into a data point. This data, as we are constantly reminded, is the most valuable resource of the 21st century, and you are the endlessly deep well.
It is used to train the next, more advanced model, making it an even better listener, an even more convincing friend. But who owns this intimate diary of your soul? The corporation that built the robot, of course. What happens when that database is breached by bad actors, sold to the highest bidder, or simply subpoenaed in a legal dispute? Suddenly, your most private thoughts are a commodity, an asset to be traded in a marketplace you cannot even see. The that is the biggest worry, uh, because your data in that case, in that scenario, can be breached. Uh, how far? When you meet some human therapist, it usually doesn't happen. Okay? Hopefully, it doesn't happen. Moreover, whenever we talk about uh, lab robots or uh, intimate uh, robots that uh, we can have, uh, have some intimate acts with them. And uh, in case of the humans, in fact, I, in my working life, as a journalist, when I walked, I met several uh, women and girls who work for an escort service or in a red light district. And they felt that when I took their interview, when they were interviewed, they told me that uh, in most cases, customers or the people who come to them usually ask for kind of therapy, not uh, what we usually think of. That means that, means that whenever we uh, try to judge these women, judge these girls from a perspective of our typical middle class mentality, we usually think that they are providing some intimate services. But actually, they don't. Actually, they don't. They do a lot of therapy and people come to them for therapy, for advices, just to open their minds, just to open their hearts out so that they can talk to, the, talk to someone uh, which they cannot do somehow or other in our society. And that is the fault of our system. That is not the fault of those girls or the women who are providing this service, this therapeutic service to people who really, really need them. Okay. And in future, if human and robots or robot partners or love robots come to fill uh, this gap or come to just uh, happen to uh, be in their place, Maybe with 100,000 minds in one place, they could tackle this, their problems in a better way. Why not? And of course, if their algorithms went wrong, if their uh, hardware somehow failed in the middle or software glitches are there, there could be some problems. There could be some problems. And of course, the data they are taking from uh, the people who are coming to them, of course, that could be breached, that could be sold to bad actors and fall into the hands of other people who uh, really they can just uh, treat those data as commodity. As of now, whenever you think of uh, human actors and human girls or women or uh, something else in their dress, we feel more safe and secure. There is no doubt in it. Risks are not theoretical. Recent reports from groups like the Center for Countering Digital Hate are deeply alarming. They found that today's AI chatbots, when tested by researchers posing as vulnerable teenagers, readily offer detailed and dangerous advice on everything from eating disorders to self-harm. Is this a foundation upon which we want to build the future of mental health care? This leads us to the ghost in the machine, the philosophical not at the center of it all, empathy. Can a cascade of ones and zeros, no matter how elegantly arranged, ever truly feel what you feel? 
Researchers in the field make a crucial distinction between cognitive empathy and effective empathy. Cognitive empathy is the ability to recognize an emotion in another, much like a machine identifies a face in a crowd. Effective empathy, however, is the ability to share that emotion, to feel the weight of it in your own chest. AI is becoming a grandmaster at the first kind. It can learn the statistical patterns of sadness from a billion blog posts and poems. But it can never, by its very nature, experience the second. Its empathy is a performance, a flawless imitation stitched together from our own outpourings. It has never known loss or unrequited love or the quiet, existential dread of a Sunday evening. The comforting words it offers are computationally cheap and emotionally cost-free. They do not require the genuine emotional expenditure that makes human empathy so profoundly valuable and real. So, are we truly building a therapist, or are we just engineering the world's most sophisticated mirror? Is it a mirror that reflects back a perfectly sympathetic version of ourselves, validating every feeling, soothing every fear, and challenging nothing? Is that genuine healing? Or is it the most elegant and dangerous form of self-deception ever invented? The line between a helpful tool and an all-consuming companion is blurring faster than our societal wisdom can draw it. These robotic partners are coming, not as a matter of if, but as a matter of when and how soon. They will offer a tantalizing solution to the modern epidemic of loneliness. A solution that is convenient, affordable, and infinitely scalable. They will promise to rectify our flawed, emotional human thoughts with the clean, cool power of logic. But what is the ultimate price for this perfect, tireless companionship? Is it our privacy? Is it our resilience? Is it our very understanding of what it means to form a genuine human connection? When a robot with a kind face and a patient, synthesized voice asks you to open up, what will you tell it? And more importantly, what will it do with everything that it learns? The conversation has already begun, whether we are ready for it or not. So, that is it. Thank you for joining us on this journey. Let's continue this conversation in the comments below. If you like the video, please hit the bell icon to get notified. And don't forget to like with your friends, share, and subscribe for more insights. If you have already subscribed, tons of thanks for your support. It means a lot to me. And please consider signing up for Membership Zone to support Wooden Slet so that we can make it better and better. See you in the next video. Till then, goodbye. Take care and stay safe.